Welcome to another lecture in Dr. Scalpel's Guide to Surgery. Now we're making progress. We've talked about incisions, exposure, and bleeding. Today we're going to look at some of the moves you can make when you're in the operative field and how to handle the tissues of the body. Are you ready to operate, Alex? Yes, indeed, Dr. Scalpel. Let's start with your hands. Consider your dominant hand. For most of us, that's your right hand. This is the hand that's going to be doing most of the work in the OR. It's the hand that holds the scalpel, the scissors, the clamps, and the cautery. If your dominant hand is the brawn, your non-dominant hand is the brains of the operation. That's your left hand for most of us. Your left hand is the one that holds the tissue still, or displays the part you have to cut next, and provides traction in the correct direction. If you don't have proper traction on the tissues, it makes it very hard to get the job done. Proper traction in the right direction is a key element of surgery. So it would be hard to be a one-handed surgeon then? It would be very hard. You have to use both hands at the same time. If an operation is going badly, it may be because you're forgetting to use both hands. That goes double for laparoscopic surgery. So don't you let your left hand fall asleep. Got it, Alex? Yes, sir. Both hands awake at all times. Okay, let's talk tissue handling. People aren't made of tissue paper and cotton wool, but they aren't made of steel either. You have to learn how firm you can be when you're handling a person's tissues. If you're too gentle, you won't get the job done. But if you're too hard, you'll damage the things you shouldn't. So. Don't be afraid of the body, but don't hurt it either. You have to treat the tissues with respect. Okay, treat tissues with respect. Check. Right, what's next? Oh, for goodness sakes, thumbs. I'm trying to teach here. Sorry, Dr. Scalpel. Sorry I'm a bit late. I was just borrowing some instruments from the OR. Oh, okay. Actually, those might be useful. What have you got there? Um, let's see. There are some Tobagis, Addison's, some Bonnie's, and then some Cokers and Alice's, and then some Snaps and Kelly's. Those are all instruments? How am I ever going to learn all those names? Don't worry, Alex. Soon you'll be able to name them on site. It's cool to be able to ask for an instrument by name instead of saying, Hey, can I have that pointy thing with the doohickey on it? Yeah, because no one here ever did that. Right, Thumbs? Hey, we all have to start somewhere. Okay, let's start with handheld forceps. They're basically like a really long set of tweezers. You hold them in your hand and use the tips to pick up and hold the tissue. Some people call them pickups or thumbs. Like Dr. Thumbs? Yep, just like me. It's because you make them work with your fingers and thumbs. There are all kinds. Long and short, heavy and light. You can get ones with big teeth on them, and some with lots of little teeth, and some with no teeth at all. Wait, so there's forceps with and without teeth? What's the difference? Non-tooth forceps have smooth tips. They are used to hold delicate tissues. Tooth forceps have teeth on them. They are for gripping tougher tissue like the skin. There are lots of names for these thumb-type forceps. Adsons are short and tooth. Bonnies are long and tooth. The bakies come in three sizes and have little teeth. You'll encounter other ones in the field too. Because the teeth on the bonnies are bigger, we use them if we're working with tough fascia. Adsons get used on the skin, and I like the bakies for the bowel. The bakies are my favorite. There is another sort of instrument we hold tissue with called tissue forceps. These are kind of like scissors. They have two blades connected with a hinge or a ratchet. You put your thumb in one hole and your ring finger in the other. Use your index finger to study the instrument and you're ready to go. These forceps grab onto the tissue pretty hard, so be careful not to injure the tissue. 
You'll sometimes see a surgeon checking a tissue for up out by putting it on their own hand, just to see how hard it holds. Ow! Cool! Are there different kinds of tissue forceps? Absolutely! Some of the ones you might see are the Babcocks, which we put on the bowel sometimes. Then there are the Ellis forceps. These are more robust than the Babcocks. And then the Cokers have big teeth on them. They grip the tissue pretty hard. Yep, you will never use a Cokers on the bowel. It would just be too hard on the tissue. We only use cokers on really tough tissue like the fascia. Wow, there are a lot of instrument names to learn. This is only the start, Alex. But don't worry. Once you start operating, you'll soon learn your Babcocks from your Depeki. Neato. Okay, Alex. That's enough for one day. What did you learn? Let's see. Number one. Don't be afraid of the body's tissues, but don't be rough with them either. Number two. Use both of your hands when you're operating. Number three, one hand cuts and the other hand handles tissue and provides traction. Number four, handheld forceps are called thumbs and you work them with your fingers and thumb. Number five, tissue forceps work like scissors and they clamp onto tissue. Number six, pick your forcep to match your surgery and how tough the tissue is. I do. I think she's got it. I am such a great teacher. Right, Thumbs? Yes, boss.